For the next stage of the painting, I'll be adding permanent alizarin crimson, Hansa yellow light, and that's a fluid Hansa yellow, and some Tharlow blue with a green shade. I'll also be using the square edged brush and a small nylon round brush and some acrylic glazing liquid gloss. So now I've got these big shapes in, I'm still working with the darks, but just looking for any kind of smaller shapes. So I've got that nice variety between these real, you know, solid shapes that go through. You notice how that is all connected. There's all this connected dark line that goes through. And then I start to get a few little gaps, a few little dashes of dark, and it goes through to this other connected line. Okay, that's great. So now I can bring in the cadmium yellow light to really start to bring a punch of these vivid greens. And they're gonna work so well against this nice dark green that we've just got established. This is just the pure cadmium yellow light. Just give me a couple of dashes on the painting. It's often nice if you've got a really intense color sometimes, you can just put it in really easily. It just gives you something to work to. And now I can start with the cadmium yellow and the ultramarine blue, which will give us the more muted green. So I'm looking for those yellowy hues to start with. And as it goes into the water, you can add a bit of brown to it. That will just mute that down. Then making a darker green, still with the yellow and the blue. Now with the ultramarine blue and the yellow, the cad yellow, you're getting this really nice bottle green color. I'm just going to introduce some of the alizarin crimson just so we can put some of these warmer areas 
onto the foreground of the painting and then we can judge the really intense greens towards the end of the painting. As soon as you have these warmer hues, they really start to pop in the painting and the greens start to come to life because you've got that contrast between having these reddy pinky elements in your painting. So if we push that a bit more with a bit more of the pinky hue. Doesn't need much, just an indication. Now I'm just gonna to swap to the square brush. I can start to add in some of the green straight into the cadmium yellow to get that real intensity of green. It's quite watery this, so it's just like doing a very subtle glaze over it just to bring that intensity level up. Now with a little bit of Hansa yellow light, what I can do, if you've got a clean brush, you can just work some of that over some of these real uh, intense areas on the left hand side. And it will just smoke in because it's such a transparent pigment. It gives it this nice yellowy haze effect. So ideally you'd have this on a flat palette, but this is just so you can see the colours better. So again, some more of the hands are yellow light, a bit, a little bit of glazing liquid now, and then I can just again blush some of those colours over and then work with the green to have that real intensity, just for giving that, that odd, real, real vivid 
a punch of green in the painting. You don't want to overdo it and go too mad on it, but just a little bit can really bring it to life. So now to match the intensity of the green, I'm going to add a Barlow blue with a green shade and that's going to just give us a bit more punch of turquoise colour that we can put in the foreground here and a little bit in the sky just to bring the elements together. At the moment, this blue, it kind of works, but it looks a little bit too purple. So by adding some of this more intense blue to the scene, it will just marry better with the palette that we're using. So you can see instantly it's got this really vivid turquoise that can just give us this punch in the front of the painting. And just swap into the larger brush. I'm just going to be using the paper towel just to smudge it over some of the clouds. A bit more glazing liquid. Then with the finer brush you can add any more details just to get little areas of shapes that might need tweaking, to paint in a few sky holes, just to give a bit of a bit of difference on the edge of the tree. It can often help just to break through a little bit to give a little indication of a sky hole. So for the final stage of the painting, I'm going to take a break now from the easel, clean down my palette and just come back to the painting with fresh eyes. And often this can help just to give you a clear view in your painting about what you can tweak just to pull the whole painting together. <laughs> 